Good day, traders. Welcome to another edition of Elliot Wave Theory course as part of continuations to understanding corrective structure. As you know, this is the uh, fourth video in this course. In day one, we study uh, the introductory aspects of Elliot Wave Theory. In day two, we discuss uh, uh, impulsive parts of the waves, uh, which we call motif waves. We did study motif waves extensively, and we also study diagonal. All right. In part three of the course, we study corrective structure. All right. And we, I, I also uh, discussed with you that we're going to have uh, four different types of corrective structure. Uh, to be discussed. And then I also made it clear that it was not going to be possible to discuss all the four types of corrective structure in just one video. So in part three, I actually discussed two of the corrective structures. I discussed extensively zigzag corrective structure. I also discussed extensively flat corrective structure. If you remember, just for the sake of knowledge and recap, we have an impulse. This is a zigzag corrective structure. And after this is ended, you have to push to the upside. This is a zigzag corrective structure. What you see in the middle here is a zigzag corrective structure, guys. We also discuss flat corrective structure. That in flat corrective structure, you have an impulse. You can have one, two, and three, this is a regular flat, and you have the push to the upside, and then uh, this is a regular flat. Then you have uh, what is called a running flat. You have a push, you have this, you have this does not take the high, this does not take the low, and you have to move to the upside. This is a running flat. And then you have the third types of variation, where you have the push, you have this one moves to this way, you have this one break the top here. This one cannot break the bottom, and you have the move. This is a running flat, guys. And the top, the fourth, and the last type of flat is what is called an expanding flat. You have the A, gentlemen, B break the top of A, and then C break the bottom of A, and you have to move to the offside. This is called an expanding flat, guys. So when you want to label it, guys, you come here, you pick a little with labeling. You have uh, with A, with B, with C. Uh, you come here, you have with A, with B, with C. Come here, you have with A, with A, with B, with C. Come here, you have with A, with B, with C. And I also discuss with you, I also discuss with you that there is what we call a structural transformation of flat corrective structure, that this running flat, flat corrective structure can transform to a regular flat this way, okay? And then before you trade it, before you trade this running flat, you must therefore allow this structure to break to the upside, and then the next corrective structure here to 50 to 61.8 will be your confirmation that this wave to the upside will come. And we also discuss that this uh, corrective structure here that's a running flat can also transform to an expanding flat because B here has already broken the start of A and then you can have this structure comes down here and this has become this guys, all right? This structure has become this structure. So in order to uh, mitigate that, when this is forming a running flat, you need, it, you need to see this wave break the top of B. And as soon as B is broken, you look for corrective structure to 50 to 61.8. And then you take your trade to the upside. This is how to approach it. All right. So this is just a summary of uh, what uh, was contained in uh, the part three of the Elliott Wave Theory course. Now, we want to continue uh, in this uh, uh, part four which is going to be on the remaining two corrective structure. 
What are those two corrective structures we are going to take a look at today? Number one, we're going to look at what we call triangle. Okay, we're going to look at triangle. And then number two, we're going to look at what is called combination, combination corrective structure. Combination corrective structure, which we call uh, 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 double three, and triple three. We call it double three. Okay. Double three. And then triple three. Triple three. All right. We'll get there. So, but first and foremost, let's pick triangle first before we go to combination corrective structure. All right. Let's pick triangle. Okay. In your elementary mathematics in secondary school, in, in secondary school or primary school, we talk of a triangle. This is a shape of a triangle. Triangle is a shape like this. Okay, it's a triangle. All right. So triangle is a sideways. Can you see? It's a sideways. When we're talking of diagonal, we're talking of a structure like this. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. Can you see? This is a diagonal. This was called a diagonal triangle. It's actually facing upside. And then it's a motif wave. We said it's going to break down to the upside in three waves. If this is wave one, this can be wave two, and then this can proceed to the upside to make wave three. So this becomes a motif wave. This, and, uh, 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 this is a motif wave, a diagonal. But in this case, we are talking of a sideway corrective structure, which is called triangle. Is correcting sideways. It means that this is linking two impulses together. Okay, this is a corrective structure like uh, boots and knots connecting this slab and this slab together. This cannot be a boot and knot. This is a, a wave that is developing in the direction of the trend. So it is a motive wave. It cannot be, it cannot serve the function of boot and knot. Why this can serve? the function of both and not because it is a triangle. Is that okay now, guys? So you have to understand uh, and that and get that clear to you. Now, when you look at triangle, what part of the structure can you find a triangle? Remember, guys, in an impulse, in an impulse this way, in an impulse this way, one, two, three, four, and five. You now have A, B, and C, okay? Now let's label them, let's label them guys. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. And then let's get the ABC, ABC structure, ABC structure, A, B, and C. Can you see that this is an impulse because it has a five wave structure. So within an impulse, as we have seen from at the beginning, uh, when we discuss impulse, that this proceed in the direction of the wave, wave one, wave three, wave five. They are moving, they are very fast and sharp in the direction of the overall trend. While this wave two, mark in three, and then wave four, mark in three, they are Pro, pro, uh, they are, they are, you know, they are proceeding against the direction of the trend, and that is where you find corrective structure. So a triangle is a corrective structure and can be found in wave two of an imp, of an impulse, and you can find it in wave four of an impulse. All right, you can also find it in wave B of a correction because a triangle is a corrective structure. So in a, in, in a corrective structure, I have told you that the formula is simple. A is equal to an impulse, B is equal to a correction, and then C is equal to an impulse, okay? So if this A is an impulse, it's very sharp. If C is an impulse, it's very sharp. But if this B is a correction and it's very slow, then it is appropriate that you can find a triangle there. These are the areas where you can find a triangle in a structure, guys. These are the areas you can find triangle in a structure. 
Okay. Now, what is the uh, what is the structure of a triangle? Can I draw a sample of a triangle? Oh yes, you can do that. Okay. You have an impulse, so you have one, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay. So if you have this, you have it this way. Have this one, you have it that way. Okay. This is a triangle, guys. And then you have this the structure of a triangle is A, B, C, D, E. Okay, this is an impulse. You have with A, with B, with C, with D, with E. All right, meaning that I have to have a one, two, and three to the downside. Okay, then after you have it this way, remember this must touch the triangle, or this one must touch the upper and lower boundary of the triangle. Okay, then after you are going to have this continuation to the upside. Guys, we we'll have this continuation to the upside. Okay, can you see? This is what is called a triangle. So a triangle is essentially a five-wave structure with three, 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 three structure. What do I mean by three, 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 three structure? It means that with A is made up of three waves, which is one, two, and three. And then with B, it's made up of three waves, one, two, one, two, and three. With C, it's made up of three waves, which is one, two, and three. And then with D, it's made up of three waves, one, two, and three. And the last wave is made up of what? Three waves, one, two, and three. So a triangle is essentially a three, 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 three structure. Do you get it now? Okay. So another thing you should know about uh, a triangle is that as part of the guideline for the formation of a triangle, it is allowed for one of the waves to be an impulse. It is allowed that one of the waves to be an impulse, especially this wave D, for instance. This wave D can be an impulse. Can you see a whole impulse? So you have three, 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 five, three. Okay. If this wave B, D is an impulse, it is allowed. Why must it be with D? You see, this is the trend upside. So a wave, one of the waves that is to proceed upside can be a straight line impulse. It is allowed by guideline. Okay. Another thing you should know about a triangle that the wave E is the last wave of a triangle and this wave e of a triangle it is permitted for it to overshot the lower boundary of the triangle where's the lower boundary of the triangle guys this is the lower boundary of the triangle in case of a bullish trend all right so it's allowed to overshot it you know that all other one cannot overshot it but this one can overshot it here before this move will progress from here to the offside Okay, Elliot wave, you know, Elliot, you know, Elliot did not actually give us a reason why uh, this overshoot, overshot uh, normally happen. But based on his experiences, he discovered that this uh, phenomenon always happened. But I want to tell you that the reason why this has to happen is the necessity for this uh, market to take liquidity from demand. If you look at what is happening right here, read quick guys, let me show you here, between here and here, it's possible that there, uh, there were excess demand over supply. And then for this market to have a meaningful push to the upside, this wave E, which being the last wave of the triangle, must flash down to take liquidity from demand and have a push to the upside, okay? The same thing is applicable. If you have a triangle that is connecting a supply, this is an impulse, you have a triangle, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, 
and three, one, two, and three. Okay, one, two, and three. A, B, C, D, E. One, two, and three. Then move to the downside. It's a triangle, guys. Uh, you have to connect it here. You have to connect this one right here real quick. Here. This has to touch this one. So this a triangle in a very strange. And then if you have to do the labeling, you have with A, with B, with C, with D, with E. And you have continuation move to the downside. Can you see? So we are also saying that in the case of a bearish uh, impulse, that is uh, bearish impulses that is connected by a triangle, it is allowed that this particular with E being the last wave of the structure is permitted to flash up to the upside. And whenever it flashes up to the upside, it's coming to grab liquidity at supply. This is supply level, it's coming to grab liquidity here, guys. Boom. And then from here, you catch it at psychological level and make it move to the downside. All right? So this is just the background information about what we call a triangle. Now, let's... Um, um, let me also add, let me also add that in a triangle, apart from seeing uh, all the structure as zigzag, corrective structure, uh, usually what you see is a zigzag corrective structure. But there are times that triangle itself, the internal structure will normally form a complex corrective structure. What do I mean? This with uh, this with uh, B can form a flat corrective structure. Can you see? Can you see right here? Right here, guys. This is flat. It can form a flat corrective structure. So you can see with A, this with B is one, two, and three. Regular flat in with B, it is possible. We'll see uh, forming a, uh, a zigzag. And then with D, that has to come back, can also form another flat here. Can you see another flat here? This T qualifies as a triangle in as much as all the structures, corrective structure are happening within the lower and the upper boundary of the triangle is still qualified. Do you understand? Even there are times where the last wave of, an, of, of a triangle, which is with E, can also be a triangle in itself, but it is a real occasion. Okay, I want you to take note of these guys. So, and when you are having a flat, then you are already having a complete corrective structure within the triangle. Now, let's move to types of triangle. Okay, let's move, let's move to types of triangle. All we have been discussing about corrective structure may not make sense to you guys until you start practical application. Okay, types types of triangle. Guys, you have two types of triangle. We have two types of triangle. Number one, we have what is called uh, contracting triangle. Contracting triangle. Okay. We have contracting triangle, guys. And we have what is called expanding triangle. Expanding triangle. Okay, expanding triangle. So I'm going to draw the two for you. Already you have understood uh, uh, what the, uh, the background information that you need to know about a triangle. So when you hear of contracting triangle, you see a triangle that is contracting as the waves is progressing. Okay. Okay, can you see that this triangle is doing what? Contracting. Can you see that if you look at the beginning of this triangle, it was white from here to here. But look at the end of this triangle, guys, from here to here. Can you see? Very, 
uh, small hair and very big hair, very wide hair and very narrow hair. This is why it is called a contracting triangle. Now, let me draw example of expanding triangle. I see one, two, sorry. I have to draw it again. I want to draw expanding triangle. One, two, and three. 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 And then you have to move to the downside, okay? Can you notice something, guys? That as this triangle was unfolding, it was expanding. Can you see? Expanding. This is, uh, if you have to do the labeling very correctly, you have uh, with A, with B, with C, with D, with E, and they move to the downside. And this one, if you have to do the labeling, guys, you have with A, with B, with C, with D, with E, and they move to the downside. Can you see? So, can you see that as this uh, particular uh, uh, triangle is forming, it's narrowing down, that's a contracting triangle. And this one, as it's forming, is expanding in nature, is an expanded triangle. This one is not common, okay? This is the commonest type of triangle that you find in the market, contracting triangle, okay? There is also the third variety of a triangle, which we call a running triangle, guys, a running triangle. In the case of a running triangle, you have the wave B passing the level of wave A. Let me explain. You have an impulse, okay? You have one, two, and three, okay? This uh, wave B will now come one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. All right, you have this for me here. Okay, you have this for me here. Okay, you have this for me here. You notice something, guys? You notice this, uh, the beginning of this with A, guys, the beginning of this with A here, does not come to the level of wave B. All right, let's leave it. A, B, C, D, E. And then, boom, continuation to the downside. All right, but do you notice something, guys? In the case of the beginning of wave A here, it does not touch the lower boundary of the triangle. So you now find wave B breaking the level of the start of wave A within a triangle. Whenever you see this occurring in a triangle, this is what is called a running triangle, guys. A running triangle, guys. This is a running triangle. All right. So now there are several variations of a contracting triangle, guys. A contracting triangle. I'm going to explain there are several variations of a contracting triangle. Number one, let's look at it briefly types of contracting triangle. We have what is called symmetrical triangle, symmetrical, symmetrical triangle. Okay, about two, that's what is called a descending triangle. Okay, descending triangle, okay. And the third one is what is called an ascending triangle. An ascending triangle. Ascending triangle. Okay. These are the three types of, you know, of a contracting triangle. Remember, a contracting triangle, as it's developing and it's progressing, it keeps narrowing down. That's why we call it a contracting triangle. So we have three different types of a contracting triangle. Let me draw them for you real quick, guys. Assuming you have a move to the downside, it's an impulse. You now want to see a triangle that is asymmetrical in nature. One, two, and three. 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 
You notice something real quick, guys. You see this? Okay. See this? See this, guys. Do you notice something? The top is slanting downward, and the bottom, the base is slanting upward. Okay. At the equal proportion, they are slanting at equal proportion. This one was sl is slanting, slicing down. This one is slanting up at equal proportion. And the labeling B with A, with B, with C, with D, with E. And then an, another leg to the downside. Okay, you know, a corrective structure is a, a, is a pattern that joins two impulses together. So after you have the first impulse, you have corrective structure, you must have the next impulse. This is your trade, guys. This one right here, let me show you real quick, guys. This is your trade, guys after the formation of triangle. And it's even better for you guys, if you have this overshot, this trend line, to catch liquidity and supply. Then you're gonna take your trade right here real quick. For those who do not understand Elliott wave theory, guys, they are gonna think that you're gonna get, uh, here, you're gonna get corrective structure here and begin to move to the upside. They are failed, guys, right from the beginning. Why? They do not understand chart analysis. Okay, so this is uh, what is called symmetrical triangle. It is symmetrical in nature, both up and down, sl sliding at the same gradient, guys, at the same gradient. That's what is called symmetrical triangle. Now, let's look at the second type of triangle. The second type of triangle is what is called descending triangle descending triangle it is descending in the sense that the the upper boundary is what is sliding okay you have what is called a declining top well called declining top and flat bottom okay you have a push to the downside you have one two and three you have one two and three you have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. And you move to the downside, okay, for a downtrend. Now, see something real quick. Slicing top, and then flat bottom. This is what we call a, a what? A descending triangle. Let's label them, guys. Let's label it. It's with A, with B, with C, with D. Come on. Come on. Sorry, guys. Good. Let me delete this one. We have another one. Uh, A, B, C, D, E. With one, with two, with three, with A, B, C, D, and E. And you move to the downside. What do you notice here, guys? What is the difference between this and this? This does not slant, guy. Okay? It is only the one at the top that is sliding. So when you have a triangle like that, it is called a descending triangle. Okay? What was the last one, guys, that we call ascending triangle? In an ascending triangle, you have an impulse to the downside. So it is only the, the, the lower part of the triangle that will be rising the upper part remain flat, okay? One, two, and three. One, two, and... Oh, sorry, guys. Let's delete this. Let's pick another one. You have an impulse to the up downside. You have one, two, and three. Okay? One, two, and three. Okay? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then it move to the downside. Okay, let's draw it. Uh, here it's always rising, guys. It's rising, guys. Okay, it's rising, guys. And then here is flat, guys. Flat. This is called a rising triangle, guys. A, sorry, an ascending triangle, guys. It's with A, with B, with C, 
with D, with E, and it moves to the downside. Remember, this with uh, E can make a move to the upside. It is still a triangle. This with C, with E, the last wave of a triangle can overshoot, okay? To grab liquidity as supply. Do you understand now? So these are the three variations. These are the three different types of triangle. Symmetrical triangle, you know, having uh, equal slope between the top boundary and the lower boundary. And then we have what is called a descending triangle where the, the upper part of the triangle is sliding to the downside. And then the lower part of the triangle remains flat. Flat bottom uh, at declining top, okay? And we have the third uh, type of triangle, which we call ascending triangle. In an ascending triangle, you have a flat top and you have a rising bottom, okay? So triangle, this is how to draw the triangle. If it's for uptrend, then you have an impulse, then you have one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then you have to move to the upside. It's simple, guys. This is a triangle, guys. This is a triangle. It's a triangle. Can you see? This is a connector between the two impulses, guys. This is the corrective structure. Okay? It's the corrective structure, all right, of the triangle. So these are the different types of triangle. These are the different types of contracting triangle that you have. I've discussed with you that the second type of triangle is called an expanding triangle, guys. Expanding triangle. What is expanding triangle? Expanding triangle is simple, guys. Expanding triangle is you have an impulse, you have one, two, come on, sorry. Pardon me, guys. You have an impulse, you have one, two, and three. One, two, and three, it's expanding. One, two, and three, it's expanding. One, two, and three, it's breaking it. One, two, and three, all right. So after this, you have a move to the upside. Then you have to draw this. This is an expanding triangle. You can see, the triangle is expanding, can you see? So if you have to label it, guys, it becomes with A, with B, with C, with D, with E. This is called an expanding triangle. Can you see as the impulse develops before the next impulse, you see it's already moving to the upside from here. And the triangle is becoming wider and wider and wider and wider. That is why we call it expanding triangle, guys. Okay? Now, I want you to note the following, I've discussed with you a running triangle, guys, a running triangle. I've discussed with you a running triangle that if you have an impulse, okay, you have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. A, B, C, D, one, two, and three. To make a move to the upside. But you know that here, uh, you have uh, this move here, you have this one here, right here, guys, but this one does not come to that side. Okay, okay, okay. I will show you what is called a running triangle, guys. I've showed you before. Can you see? So if we have to label these guys, this becomes with A, with B, with C, with D, with E. Can you see? And they move to the upside. Do you notice something, guys? that the beginning of with A here, guys, does not come to uh, the upper boundary of the triangle, okay? So anytime you see a triangle like this, where the beginning of with A does not come to the upper boundary of with B, then it is called a running triangle. This is a running triangle, as you see here. This is a running triangle, guys, very simple, running uh, triangle. <laughs> Excuse me. So you have to note the following, guys, about triangle. Note the following about triangle. Okay. Most of the triangle, guys, 
have internal structure as a zigzag. Can you see a zigzag is just like this. We have discussed zigzag in our last video. You have an impulse, you have a, a correction, you have an impulse. This is zigzag. You see this structure here is what you see here. All these internal structures, it is zigzag in three waves that you are going to see there. So sometimes in wave C of a triangle, uh, uh, it can also form a regular flat on an expanding flat. Where's wave C, guys? This wave C, this can form a regular or an expanding flat, very possible, all right? Most likely, it does, it, in most cases, it forms a regular flat. It's not common because if you have to form an expanding flat, this wave is going to break, it's going to overshot the trend line the upper boundary of the triangle and we don't want it to overshot it so it's only with e that we can overshot it so in most cases you have a uh, regular flat okay so in a in a real uh, circumstance i have also told you that you can see a triangle in with e but it's not common okay so if a triangle appears in wave four of an impulse okay experience shows that uh, the uh, the widest part of the triangle will be approximately the size of wave five. Can you see? Let me explain to you guys. You have wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five. Okay. So if in this wave four guys, if in this wave four guys, you are having a triangle. I'm going to explain to you real quick, guys. Just hold on. This will fall. You are having a triangle, which is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, it's a triangle, guys. This is a triangle, guys. So, if you have a triangle here in will four, guys, what this rule is telling us is that this will five. In this wave four, you have a triangle. Wave five is going to be the length from here to here. Project it here. Bring this one here. Yeah, this is going to be wave five. So in that case, you're going to have uh, this structure here. Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. Why are we projecting this wave five like this? Because the rules say, you know, the guideline says that the widest part of the triangle would be the length of wave five. If you, per adventure, you see uh, wave four as a triangle. Is that okay now, guys? Okay, that is where the concept of uh, uh, trust uh, comes in. That's what is called trust. Okay, uh, let me uh, write it for you. This is what we call trust. Okay, trust. Okay, that in most cases, Mr. Elliot says that this wave five is going to come this way, guys. You know, come like one, two, three, four, five. And in most cases, you're going to come as a, a diagonal. You know, I told you, I've taught you before that when a diagonal appears in wave five of an impulse, uh, of an impulse, it is called a and ending diagonal. And when you see this up trust here, you're going to break down in three waves. Okay, one, two, and three. Before you see another consideration uh, uh, push to the upside. Do you understand, guys? So that is all about triangles. I know it might not make too much sense to you, but my, my belief is that for you to understand something practically, you must understand the theoretical guidelines. Okay, the theoretical guidelines is what is going to guide you to understanding the chart itself. I don't, I hate, you know, teaching uh, my students and jumping straight to the chart. You are not going to know anything. But if you know this theory and this basis of the chart, by the time you get to the chart and you are applying all that you have learned, you now discover that it is better to do more of theoretical research than to just come on to the uh, financial market chart and begin to trade it. Go and do your research, okay? 
learn more about the theory. Once you know more about the theory, the practical is not going to be an issue. Okay, so that will be the end, guys, of triangle. When I want to look at what we call combination co uh, uh, corrective structure, all right? Corrective combinations. That's what we want to look at here. Let me give you a scenario. But with regard to what we have been learning so far, if you have an impulse, you have a three wave pullback, guys. What are you expecting next? You are expecting this continuation, is that not? What of instead of this continuation to come, you are now having another one, two, and three. This means this one, two, three that you have shows us that this continuation to the upside is not going to come because you are having another three wave structure here, which is a correction. So you cannot replace a corrective structure. You cannot replace an impulse with a corrective structure. You are expecting an impulse here as a continuation move like this one, powerful like this one. But instead of something that is powerful like this one, you are getting something like this one, which is a corrective structure. It then means you are going to come back to the downside. And after you have come back to the downside, you make a move to the, to the upside. Do you understand now? So in that case, you now see that you are having a three wave down, a three wave up, and a three wave down. So this three wave down is W, okay, W, with three waves up is X and three waves down is Y. Let me explain. When you have a corrective structure, when you have, I taught you something guys, that if you have an impulse this way, wait, let me show you real quick. If you have an impulse this way, this correction, this one that is against the trend here guys, it is a correction, okay? And then this one that is going, any correction that is going in the direction of the impulse is actionary in nature, which is X. And then you have another one going against the trend, which is Y, before you have this continuation. It then means if we replicate what we have here into this place, it then means that this, uh, this is with A, this is with B, and this is with C. So in that case, you know, this is a correction. This is a correction. And uh, 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 sorry, this is, uh, will be taken as if it's an impulse. C is an impulse. And this one is a correction. You are going to see the details later. But then what I'm telling you is that this is a corrective structure that is combining three zigzag together. I don't know if you notice it, three zigzag together. This is zigzag number one, this is zigzag number two, and this is zigzag number three. So this is three zigzag combined together. And it is what is called uh, double three. What do I call it? Double three corrective structure. Double three combination corrective structure. Why is it a double three uh, corrective structure? I'm going to show you guys really quick. And you must pay attention to this uh, corrective structure I'm showing you because those are the things you'll be seeing every day in your chart. You have an impulse, you have one, two, and three. This is just a connector. This is a connector. This is a connector. Then you have another one, two, and three. So. If this one that is a connector here is taken as an impulse, can you see it's in the direction of the impulse? Look at the impulse here. See the impulse here? These three waves here is in the direction of that impulse. So if I take it as a one swing here, then it then means that we are having one, two, and three. This is one of the three. And then you have another one, two, and three. Okay, and after you have a continuation move to the upside. So how many three do you have in this corrective structure? You have two, three. This is the first three. This is the first three. This three in the middle is progressing in the direction of the 
main trend. Where's the main trend guy? Upside. Okay. So this three is progressing in the direction of the main trend. And for that reason, you have two, three here. This is why we call this structure double three. This is the first three here, you guys. This is the first three here. And this another first, this the second three here. This is just a connector. This is a connector. This one, guys. This X is a connector. So you have uh, what we call W here, X and Y. W, X, Y, and you have continuation. So that means that when you have an impulse, when you have an impulse this way, let me show you real quick, guys. When you have an impulse this way, the, the first three waves that come against the trend is W. And then another three waves that go in the direction of the trend is called X. And then you have the three waves that come against the trend is called Y. This is what is called W, X, Y structure. And after this W, X, Y structure is formed, you have a move to the upside. Is that okay now? This is what is called double three corrective structure. Okay. Again, you must also notice that what of a situation where you have an impulse, you have one, two, three down. You have that is W. You have one, two, three up as your X. You now have one, two, three down. You have your Y. So in this case, you are expected to have this move to the upside. Can you see? That's why you have this move to the upside. But what if instead of you having this impulse to the upside, you are now having another one, two, three. That would be, you can see that this last one, two, three resemble this one, two, three here that we call X. We have defined that the first correction against the trend is a real correction, which we call W if it is three waves. If we have another three waves to the upside, you see that it is also a correction, but it is not as impulsive as, as this one. So we are going to call it X, okay? And then when you have the next wave down here that is against this trend, since this one is called W, we label that one as Y, is because you have W, X, uh, W, X, then this is Y. Then you are having another three waves in the direction of this trend, we call that one X any correction that is in line with the trend is called X. And then, and if it is in three waves, it means that you are not going to have this move to the upside. Instead, you are going to have another three wave down. And since guys, since we call this one right here, let me show you here. Since we call this one W, we call this one X because it's in line with the trend. We call this one Y, we call this one X, what are we calling this one, guys? Z. And after this Z, you have uh, a move to the upside. Boom. All right? You got to notice something. All right? How many three waves do you have here, guys, that is correcting the this move? That's correcting this move. How many three waves that's correcting this move, guys? This move. I'll show you here. Do you notice that this are the true corrective structure here. This one that is coming down, it's a corrective structure. This one that is coming down, it's a corrective structure. This one that's coming down, it's a corrective structure. This is also a corrective structure, but in the direction of the overall trend, which is bullish. This one is a corrective structure, which is in line with overall trend, which is bullish. So how many three waves do you have here, guys? Uh, you have one, let me change the color, guys. Let me change the color to blue. You have one, you have two, and you have three. Okay? So because it is three, we call it what? Triple three corrective structure. Triple three corrective structure. It is triple because you have one, two, and three. Okay? It is three because it is three waves here, three waves here, three waves here. So this is called triple three corrective structure. And we also label it as W, X, Y, X, and Z. Do you understand now? 
So this is what is called uh, a level swing sequence. What do I call it? A level swing sequence. Can we count it? Oh, yes, we can count it. Let's count it. Let's count it, guys. Let's count it. Let's count it. Remember, we are going to be taking this one as a swing because it is in the line, it is, it is in line with the direction of the input. This is swing. We are going to take this one as a swing again. So as a swing, we are going to count it as one. Okay, so let's count it and see whether we're going to get 11. This is one, this is two, this is three. The whole of this one is four. This is five, this is six, this is seven. The whole of this one is eight. This is nine, this is 11, this is 12. Is it supposed to be 12? Let's go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I made a mistake, guys. Made a mistake, guys. This is one, two, and three. The whole of this one X is four. Then you have five, six, and seven. The whole of this one is eight. You have nine, you have 10, you have 11. And then you have a move to the upside. This is what we call 11 swing sequence, which we call W, W, X, Y, X, Z corrective structure. And you also call it what? Triple three corrective structure. Why is it triple three? There are three, there are three structures that are three, three, three that is correcting this move, guys. That is correcting this move to the upside. Okay, three structure one, two, and three. These ones are corrective structure, but in line with the direction of the major trend. Okay, when you look at this one, it is a double three corrective structure. Why? Look at it, guys. Let me show you real quick. This is one. This is one of the three. This is the second three. This one, guys, is in line with this direction. So we count it as one. So this can be a seven swing sequence. Why is it a seven swing sequence, guys? This is one. This is two. This is three. The goal of this one is four, five, six, and seven. Then you have to move to the upside. Very simple, guys. And you label this one WXY structure. W, X, and Y structure. Do you, see, do you see it, guys? So this is what is called combination corrective structure. Is it uh, every time that you just have a simple zigzag corrective structure in this uh, uh, structure? Is it every time you have zigzag? No. It's not every time you have zigzag. You can also have flat in the case uh, uh, in the case of combination corrective structure. Let's say you have a move to the downside. You can have one, two, and three as X. You can have uh, as W. You can have a zigzag as X. You can also have one, two, and three as Y. Then and a move to the downside. Can you see? Continuation move to the downside. So if you have to label it right now, real quick, guys. So this will be this will be three waves up, one, two, three. That is W. Then you have one, two, three. That is X. You have one, two, three. Expanding flat. That is Y. And then after that, you have a continuation move to the downside. Do you understand now? So if you want to trade this, you know, uh, you know, you can see that this one is equal top. When this one is for me. Allow it to break this level to the upside and catch your move. Let it catch in a move in the supply. As soon as it catch this move, take your trade to the downside. Simple, guys. Simple. It's not difficult. Do you understand now? So these are ways you understand combination corrective structure. There are also a situation where you can have the end of a corrective structure ending up as a triangle. How? For instance, if you have an impulse this way, so let us use this, guys. Uh, let's use this real quick. Uh, this one. You have an impulse to the downside, okay? And you want to have combination corrective structure. You can have one, two, and three as W. You can have one, two, three as X. You can have one, two, three as Y. And then you can have one, two, three, 
and you move to the downside. Can you see? This has become a triangle, guys. W, W, X, Y, X, and Z. Okay? So it's become a triangle, guys. A triangle, guys. Can you see? A triangle, guys. So when you see this structure now, it means the structure is just like this. You can see three after the input, you have one, two, three. This is a regular flag. That is W. You have your connector A, B, C, which is a zigzag. It's your X. You have one, two, three, which is a flat, corrective structure, a regular flat. That's your Y. You have one, two, three. That's another X. And you have a triangle A, B, C, D, E. And you have a move to the downside. Don't be surprised. When you are having this type of structure, you will see that there is possibility of E here overshooting this trend line. It still qualifies as a triangle. And when that this trend line is overshot, okay, what's the accent? You want to grab liquidity and supply. Remember, you have an impulse, red candle coming down here. Okay, so equivalent of this red candle here, you're going to have excess supply here. You're going to have excess supply. Although Elliot Wave Theory was not able to explain why this last wave had to come to grab liquidity. But of course, market has developed over time. And we know that the excess of going up to the upside is to grab liquidity and supply and flush to the downside. Can you see? So this is a combination corrective structure. Then one thing you must understand, guys, one thing that is very instructive that you must understand is that in a combination corrective structure, it is not possible for triangle to start the W. Anywhere you see triangle, that is potentially going to be the last wave in the complex structure before you have a continuation move to the downside. Triangle is very rare for triangle to be at the middle. Okay, what you can see at the middle is zigzag and flat. But anytime you see triangle at the end of WXY structure or WXYXZ structure, it signals to the end of the complex corrective structure and you are going to have a move to the downside. Are you getting me, guys? So that is, you know, a combination corrective structure, all right? So believe you are getting it and you have already got what you call uh, a swing sequences, of course, swing sequences, all right? We have discussed swing sequences. If you have uh, just a three, okay? If you, have a, you can have a seven swing sequence and you can have a level swing sequence. So if you have just uh, one, two, three, just a, it's just a three. It's just a three, okay? Uh, maybe you have a move to the downside. You have one, two, three, okay? And you have another move to the downside. This corrective structure is just a three, a three sequence. What of seven swing sequence? Seven swing sequence is simple. If you have an impulse, uh, let me illustrate with a downtrend. Now we are in a downtrend, you have an impulse, you have one, two and three, you have four, four, which is one, two and three, then one, two and three. Then you have your move to the downside. Okay, I've told you, this is an impulse, guys. This is an impulse, this is three waves against the trend, which is a corrective structure. Though you have this as a corrective structure, but it's in line with the direction of the trend. So we are going to call it a one wave like this. And this is another three. So because you're having it this way, so this becomes one, two, and three, four, five, six, and seven. This is what makes this a seven swing sequence. And this is called a corrective structure, which is what? 
flat corrective structure. Do you understand now, guys? Now, let's demonstrate a level swing sequence. You have a move to the downside. So you have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. So W, X, Y, X, and Z. And you have your move to the downside, okay? This is a level swing sequence. Why? Remember that this is a downtrend and any wave that is proceeding in the direction of the overall trend, we are going to count it as one. Where are the waves? This is counted as one. Where are the waves? This is counted as one. Now, let's cut it. This is one, two, and three. This is four. This is one, two, and three. This is four, five, six, and seven. This is eight. This is nine, 10, 11. Then you move to the downside. This is why this is called a level swing sequence. A level swing sequence. And you can also call it a triple three or W, X, Y, W, X, Y, X, Z, and a move to the downside. Is that okay, guys? Is that okay, guys? So when we get to practical application, you are going to understand this uh, very, uh, very well. Now, let's not move, let's now move forward, guys. Let's move to what is called orthodox top and orthodox low. Okay, orthodox, orthodox top, orthodox top, orthodox tops and lows, and lows. Okay, orthodox tops and low, or orthodox tops and bottom, bottom. Okay, just mind my writing. Orthodox tops and bottom. Guys, what do we mean by orthodox tops and bottom? At times, you can see a structure like this, guys. You can see a structure like this. It's making a move to the upside, making a move to the upside. It got here. I have to correct A. B goes like this. C comes like this before you make a move to the upside. Okay, in this case now, you see this high? You see this high at this level? Can you see? You see this high at this level? You see another high at this level? But this high here is A, B, and C. Okay, this is A, this is B, this is C. Can you see? But now, this B that you see here, guys, this B you see here, guys, can you see? is part of the corrective structure. So, essentially, this trend ended at this level. This trend that uh, that was proceeding from here, it ended here. It ended here. This is the termination point of this trend. This is just this level. This bit that broke this structure here is just a part of this correction. So, if we are talking about the high, the highest high of this structure now, even though even though this one is the highest point of this structure, the orthodox high, the orthodox top, rather, is this area. This is the orthodox top. This is what we are considering. This is the orthodox top. Do you understand? Why is this an orthodox top? This is where, this is where the price is recognized as the end of this trend. This correction that is developing here the B part is the one that broke this level. And we cannot identify this B that is a correction as the high of this wave. That is why we call this an orthodox top. Okay? And then once you know the structure and you know that this B is not an orthodox top, it's very easy for you to predict the next wave. In the same way, we also have what is called orthodox bottom. Okay, if you have, let's say you have a move to the upside, you have a move to the upside, you have one, two, and three, W, one, two, and three, X, 
you have one, two, and three. This is Y. And after this Y, guys, you are expected to have, just as you have an impulse here, after this Y, you are expected to have a move to the upside. But do you notice something, guys? The first correction of this W here is a triple three, a triple two, double two, double three, rather, W, X, and Y here. Do you notice something? This low here is lower than uh, this low. This is the first correction, first retracement here. Okay, this is the orthodox bottom. This is the one that we recognize as the bottom. This one that broke this level here. Okay, it only broke this level here, but this is the real bottom. And that's what is called orthodox bottom. Do you understand? If you don't want to call it orthodox bottom, you call it orthodox low. All right, the last thing I'm going to discuss with you uh, in this uh, video is what, has, what I call uh, reconciling functions and mode. Reconciling functions and mode. Reconciling. Reconciling function function and mode. Okay, listen to me very attentively, guys, because this is going to answer a lot of questions and queries in your mind. Reconciling function and mode. Do you remember that we say wave has two major functions? Okay, wave has two major functions. It is either it is actionary, it is actionary. Okay, guys, see that it is actionary or reactionary. Reactionary. Okay, it is either a wave is actionary or reactionary. When we say it is actionary, it means that the wave is developing in line with the direction of the trend, like with one, with with one of an impulse, with three of an impulse, okay, with five of an impulse, okay, with A of a correction, with C of a correction, with E of a triangle, W, Y, and Z. These are actionary waves. These are, when we say actionary waves, these are waves that behave like an impulse, guys. These are waves that behave like what? An impulse. Let me show you. One, two, three, four, five. This is A, B, and C. Okay? I mentioned the following. Let me label this, okay? This is, uh, this is A, B, and C. And this is, uh, real quick, this is one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, if you look at this one, if you look at this one here, guys, you will notice something. We say one, three, five. This is one in line with the trend. This is three in line with the trend. This is five in line with the trend A, A, C, and E. This is A, I told you it's an impulse. This is C, it's an impulse. Do you understand now? Did we mention B in, in actionary uh, 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 wave? No. So wave can function as action and as a reaction. So when it's functioning as an action, it means that it's it's an impulse. It's serving the rule of an impulse. Do you understand? That's why we say with one, with three, with five. We did not mention two. We did not mention four. We did not mention B. But we are mentioning part of correction as action now. That's with A and with C. And then when you are talking of, we are also mentioning W, Y, and Z. We did not mention X. Watch something. 
what's something, guys? So if you look at it, it's an impulse. This is one, two, and three, W, X, Y, X, Z, and they move to the upside, okay? So now, if you look at this, guys, this is W, this is X, this is Y, this is X, this is Z. So you can see X, Y, Z, they are action, actionary. Look at it, W. The w, can you see? Okay, all these X, they are connector. Y, then uh, Z, all these X, they are what? They are connector. So can you see it now that uh, all the actionary wave are the ones that are proceeding, okay, in, uh, in the direction of the trend. Then you have a reactionary wave. Reactionary wave. Wave can function as an actionary wave, and it can also function as a reactionary wave. What are those reactionary waves? These are waves that are reacting to the impulses, like wave two is reacting to the impulse, wave four is reacting to the impulse, wave B is reacting to this impulse from wave A. Can you see? So wave two, wave four, wave B, all right, wave B, and then wave D, with D of a triangle, and then with X of a W, X, Y. All this with X here, they are reacting, actionary, action, uh, reactionary, reactionary. Do you understand? And when you draw a triangle, impulse, one, two, three, 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 okay? With D, this is with A, this is with B, with C, with D, this with D, is what is a reactionary wave. Do you understand now? But now, let me now list some waves for you. Uh, now, watch something. Wave one, wave three, and wave five. In an ending diagonal. Then you have wave A, with A in a flat correction. I'm telling you now, can you see? With A, you can see it in a flat correction. So when you see a with A in a flat correction, you want to tell me that if you have impulse here, one, two, three, you have with A here, you have with B here, you have with C here. We are telling you right now that this with A, uh, uh, sorry, this is not a flat correction. This is zigzag, all right? That's a zigzag. It's flat correction here. This is with A, this is with B, this is with C. So in this flat correction, guys, this with A appears there. So even though this flat correction is a corrective structure, this with A that we see there is an impulse. Do you understand? With C is an impulse. So with A, with C, with E in a triangle, when you see a triangle here, okay, an impulse, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is a triangle, guys. Can you see? This is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and this is E. So with, um, uh, with A, with A, with C, and with E of a triangle, they behave like an impulse. Do you understand? Then with W, uh, with Y in a double correction, they behave the same way. Then with Z in a triple correction, behave the same way. So the wave above, even though, even though they are actionary, but develop in the corrective mode. Hence, we call them what? Actionary corrective wave. This is simple, guys. What are we saying? All these waves I have mentioned for you, uh, 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 look at with three, with, with one, with three, with five of, uh, of a diagonal. Let me show you a diagonal real quick, guys. Look at it here. Let's use this. Look at it here. Okay, you have one, two, three, four, and five. This is a diagonal, guys. Okay, this is a diagonal, guys. So diagonal is also a form of triangle, guys. Okay. I don't think we are drawing this 
very well guys I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this like this it's a diagonal guys okay so in this diagonal we are having this this with one with two with three with four with five okay we are saying that with one that's upside with three and with five that even though that these ones are like impulses they are happening within correction that's what we are saying that if you come to triangle that even though uh, you have uh, 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 with a with b with c with d with e before you have moved to the downside so in this uh, triangle with a c and e look at it a b c d and e where do you see this one face up up and up do you see this one coming down this one is opposing it with a with c with d that even though they are appearing as impulses they are found in what in a correction that's what we are saying and in the case of w x y uh, corrective structure look at it here look at it you see impulse here you see one two three one two three one two three so even though this one these three down three down here even though they are actionary in nature, they are found in the corrective structure. That is why we call them actionary corrective waves. So I think I'm able to break down uh, uh, to the simplest way, corrective uh, structure. So right now, real quick, I want to go to the chart and show you example of a uh, triangle, if I can lay my hand on triangle, and then also show you a corrective uh, other corrective structure okay let's look at this structure guys let's look at this structure guys let's look at this structure guys okay all right let's see if you can make sense out of this okay one two three four and five okay you have a move to the upside you have one you have two you have three you have four, you have five. After this five, it moves to the upside. This is a triangle, guys. This is a triangle. It ends here, guys. Then here, guys. This is a triangle. Let's level it, guys. Okay, I'm gonna show you example of what we have been doing, guys. After they move to the upside, this is A, B, C, D, and E. Somebody can remind me, guys, what type of a triangle is this? What type of a triangle is this? Somebody might be tempted to say this is a symmetrical triangle, but yes, in as much as I can agree with you a little, this is what's called a running triangle because the end, the beginning of wave A does not get to the, to the what? To the end of wave B, in as much as this does not come to touch this level here. This is a running triangle. All right, let's go and spot some other structure. Let's go and spot. We can see, um, we can see that this is a three-wave corrective structure. This is a WXY structure, guys. WXY structure. Okay, let me do it this way. Uh, also include the impulse. After the impulse, you have one, two, and three. You have one, two, and three. You have one, one. You cannot see this structure in between. Boom, and three. Then you have to move to the upside. This is a WXY structure, guys. Let me show you real quick. Okay, in the middle here, in the middle here, you have this little structure that, con that connect this move. This move down is being connected by this move. This one here in the middle. So you have this move. You have this move that's a complete structure so three wave down w three waves up x three wave down y this is w x y structure and after that you have to move to the upside let's i forget guys you can have a little variation in w x y structure let me just quickly address that concern before i move to the chat to show you 
uh, some other examples. So you can have something like this. You have an impulse. You have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and three. Can you see that even though this is a, a, a WXY structure, it is in form of a flat. So because of that, we call this one WXY flat, okay? If you have to label this, then you're gonna get something that look like this, W, X, and Y. So even though it's W, X, Y, it is W, X, Y flat, okay? W, X, Y flat. Do you understand now? It's very, very important you understand this, that this is a flat corrective structure. But despite the fact that it is a flat, it is in the form of W, X, Y. Why? Because instead of three, three, five, to make it a flat corrective structure, it carried three, three, three. Do you understand? Now, let's go back to the chart. Want to look for triangle, guys. Triangles, guys. Want to look for triangles, guys. What type of triangle is this, guys? This is what's called an expanding triangle. We have that with the expanding triangle. You have to move to the downside. You have one, you have two, you have three, you have four, you have five. You have to move down. All right. It's a triangle, guys. We have to label it A, B, C, D, and E. This is an expanding triangle, guys. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a lot. Let's look at uh, whether we'll get another WXY structure here. This is a clear WXY structure here. Let me show you real quick, guys. This is one, two, three, three waves down, which is called W. One, two, three waves up, which is called X. One, two, three, three waves down, which is called W. And after, you have a move to the upside. Why, why are you having this move to the upside? Because you have a move to the upside here. This is a combination corrective structure, which we have just explained here, guys. This is WXY. Let's label it, guys. Let's go to Elliot Wolf session and look for WXY. Yeah. So here, three waves down, W, three waves up, X, three waves down, Y. So you have to move to the upside. Simple, guys. Simple. You know, I'm going to show you many more examples, guys. Um, one, two, three, no, you can find it here. You, you don't force it. When you don't find it, you don't find it. When you find it, it's simple, guys. Very, very simple, guys. Okay? Very simple, guys. When you find it, okay? Remember, we talk of flat corrective structure. The other time, it's very simple. You have, you have an impulse here. You have one, one, two, three, one, complex structure always notice that you have a flat in the middle here. So you have an impulse, you have a flat correction, which this is A, this is B, this is C. Then this move that come here, you must have it here, okay? So this move that come here is a very sharp move, okay? So it's going to be a big A. Then this one, two, three, which is A, B, C here, is going to be B. And then this last wave here is going to be a C. So this is the same thing as having a structure like this, guys. You have an impulse down, which is like this one. Then you have the A wave here, which is like this one. Then the B waves is now make up of flat in the middle that connects it. And as a result, you must have this one to complete it as a C. Then after that, you will have a move to the downside. Can I give you an example real quick of the trade we took with this complex corrective structure? This is what is called complex corrective structure, guys. Okay, this is the correction in the middle that's joining this impulse and this impulse together. Let me show you real quick, guys. This is Euro GBP. We'll come back to Euro GBP. Let's go to GBP, GBP CHF. Let me show you an example of this structure that I would trade live in the group, guys. Live in the group. I'm going to show you real quick, real quick. Okay, let's clean up. You know, 
every structure you get to, you see our work. Okay, so what do we see here, guys? You see an, a move to the upside, you see one, you see two, you see three. This is even a WXY in the middle, and you have a projected move to the upside. Can you see? <laughs> Can you see, guys? Let me clean up and show you again. You see one, two, and three. You see one, two, and three. You see one, two, and three. Can you see? This is three waves. After these waves to the upside, guys, after these waves to the upside, that is wave to the upside. You have three waves down, three waves up, and three waves down. And that is what we call WXY structure. W X Y. Another after this Y, what are you expecting next, guys? Move to the upside. Simple. Can you see this move that you see here? You must get it here. So what did I do? Once I spotted this structure, guys, I gave my guys this trade. Not this. Uh, this one. Really, really quick. Boom. Stop loss here. Boom. Easy to trade. Easy pips, about two to three hundred pips to the downs or to the upside. And I say, as soon as we get equal, uh, uh, equal legs here, because the rule of a zigzag, this is a zigzag corrective structure, guys. The rule of a zigzag, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, guys, this thing is simple. Okay, you have an impulse here, the zigzag, say, when you have a corrective structure in the middle, which can be flat, it can be zigzag, it can be anything. Once it collects up to 50%, buy this leg to the upside. And this leg, this one must be the same with this one. This is uh, with A, this is with A, this is with B, this is with C. The leg of with A must be equal to leg of with C. I capitalize on this, guys. After seeing this corrective structure, I say, guys, we need to buy from here and we need to maintain that the length of with A here, guys, must be the same as the projected length here. On that note, we just targeted our profit here. Really quick, guys, boom. See, our TP is here. And as soon as we take TP here, this is already supply area. We're going to take advantage of it. And we took our trade from there to the downside. We cut this move again from here. We cut it to here. Straight on, no loss. Big, big move. That is because we understand the Elliott wave theory, guys. Okay, we understand the Elliott wave theory, guys. Let's see if we can still see examples, guys, of a corrective uh, structure. Now, let me tell you something that is very, very important, okay? So if you are seeing a structure like this, guys, you are seeing a structure like this, one, two, three. And you are seeing one, two, three. You might be tempted to trade one, two, three to the upside. You might be tempted to trade it, okay? You, the reason why you will not trade it is because this is a downtrend, okay? It's a downtrend, and you have seen that this corrective structure, guys, at this level has already hit past 61.8. So any buy opportunity at the level of 50 to 61.8, you don't take it. You allow the market to unfold and develop. Can you see it's supposed to come over here, okay, to give you this level. Because it didn't come there, it came down and still find it ways to that level. Still fine. Look at here. Find it ways to that level. There you take it to the downside. Do you understand? So that's how it is, guys. Let me see if we can still see some other examples. I want to show you examples, guys. I want to show you, today is not practical application, and I want to show you examples, examples so that you understand. This is a zigzag corrective structure, one, two, three in the middle, and this wave is up to 50 to 61.8% of this impulse, and you have another move to the downside, simple. Let me show you real quick, guys. In the middle here, you have what is called complex corrective structure. No, no, WXY structure, guys. Look at it, guys. Look at it, guys. One, two, three. Then one, two, three. 
then one, two, three. Can you see, guys? This is WXY structure as a correction, guys. You see this correction down? You see this move down, three waves? You see how the waves is corrected by three waves to the upside, W, three waves to the downside, X, and three waves to the down upside, Y. This has corrected this move. What next do you expect? Continuation move to the downside. Simple, guys. Continuation move to the downside. See? By just understanding Elliott wave theory, by just catching it, guys. Look at it. Look at, look at this, guys. Look at this, guys. You see this? Let me show you. I want to show you expanding, expanded flat, really quick. Expanded flat. Let me see if I can get it. No. Let me see if I can show you this running flat, guys. Very, very hidden. Okay, very, very hidden. But it's running flat. You see this move down? You see this? You see it break it? You can't take it. This is a running flat. Only that it failed to proceed to the downside. I told you running flat is when you have uh, this structure here. You have the A. You have B is breaking the beginning of A. And then C cannot get to the beginning of A. This is a running flat, guys. So, you know, you know, in an attempt to push downward, what happened? We expect it to go downward as a running flat. But what does it, what does it do? It make a move to the upside. This is what is called structural transformation, guys. Why? This structure has transformed from a running flat to an expanding flat. Look at it, guys. Look at it. Let me show you. This structural transformation. One. This in the middle. This is the expanding flat. Okay. Can you see, guys? Simple. I'm just showing you structure, guys. It's an expanding flat. This move here. Catch it here. Simple. Can we show more? Yes. Can you see? This is three, three, and three. This is uh, a typical example of WXY structure, guys. Three waves up, three waves, three waves down, three waves down, and three waves up. Okay, the structure is over. We should have a move down. Okay, we should have a move down. But now we are not having that move down. Then what are we having? So you have WXY. Okay, so this WXY here has become a W in itself. Okay, this is a W in itself because later in the next uh, lecture, I'm going to be discussing wave degrees. So, okay, so this is W. Then let's find the X. This is the X, one, two, and three. This is the X that is connecting them in the middle. So we can label this as X. Okay, and then you have the Y. Okay, you have the Y. One, oh no, let's not cut it this way. Okay, you have one, two, three. You notice that I'm, I'm not cutting this as one here. Why? This is too short. It is only this that is equivalent to other degrees. That's why I'm cutting through these small ones. So this is W, X, and what and we have y here guys y so after that then you now have uh w x y uh you have w x y x you have another x here guys i want to show you real quick this uh one two and three this is another x here guys okay it's another x here guys and finally, you have uh, Z. You have uh, Z. One, two, three. This market should not pass this place. It should be going downward. Can you see? It doesn't pass that, that place again. W, X, Y, Z. Z could be ending here. And then you have a move to the downside. Ever since then, a move to the downside. Even at this level, ever since then, a move to the downside. And even at this level here, you still have uh, this structure. Okay, one, two, and three. You have this structure, one, two, and three. Then if, if 
uh, on Monday now, market breaks down this way. We take another buy, buy here. Again, can you see? One, two, three waves. One, two, three. One, two, three waves up. One, two, three waves down. Then we might see another one, two, three waves up. And we'll see another massive fall to the downside again. Can you see? This is how you do your focus using wave analysis. I've showed you many examples, many, many examples, many, many examples. Let me see, see if I can show you some other examples. This is a regular flat, it's an impulse. You see one, you see two, you see three. This is a running flat, sorry. Move to the upside straight, all right? You see, this is just one that just developed, you know, last week. This is real quick, this is a running flat. This one break the, the bottom. Can you see this one break the bottom here? But this one cannot break this top. This is a running flat. Then you have boom to the downside. Where's that boom coming from? This boom that you have here. You must replicate that boom after the formation of a running flat. Then what are we expecting here? When market open, we expect this market to come all the way here to grab liquidity and supply and then make a move to the downside, boom. So you have to take a fib of this wave, of this impulse, you have to target the market. Uh, let's go to one hour, target the market to come to around 61.8, around 50 to 61.8, which is here. Uh, I would rather prefer here, guys. Okay, the market may consolidate here, break this top, grab liquidity here, boom to the downside. That's how it will behave, guys. Okay, so uh, let me just pause this video from here. You see, because we have not started uh, a practical application, we are still going to do some other videos, uh, one more video before we do a practical application. So if you enjoy what I do here and what I show you here, if you have not subscribed this channel, please do subscribe the channel, share, uh the uh share the links to your friends you know and fellow traders and then uh make sure you comment let me know what you are comfortable with in the video and let me know what you are not comfortable with in the video this will definitely help me to improve guys it will help me to improve tremendously so i expect to see those comments coming in guys and thank you very much uh, for going through this uh, course I'm still going to continue to uh, make some other videos to support some of my claims and, and the theories. Uh, if you don't, if you understand the theory, but you have not understood how to apply it on the chat, don't be in a hurry. Just keep following me on the practical guide, uh, practical applications of the uh, rules and guidelines as stipulated or established by Mr. Ralph Elliott. It's, it's, it's very interesting, guys. Once you understand this one, You'll be a king in market forecasting. So I uh, will soon drop some other videos. Uh, continue to follow me. Continue to like the video. I see you in next video. Peace.